getting ready to be on here in a little bit. That's better. There. Are we on live now? Yeah. Hey, welcome everybody. We're going to have the Lester's feet drawing here shortly and start the Chasing Giants podcast. Um, bear with us as we deal with some new issues that we haven't typically had to deal with in the past. But... Hey, look there. Hey, there we are. Eric Perry's on. We're going to plug your event here in a little bit, Eric. 42 people on. Just give us a couple more minutes to get everybody on here. Sixty-six people on so far. So as we wait, uh, is anybody, everybody, okay with me dancing and putting on some entertainment? Or you get weird when we do live <laughs> feeds. <laughs> I'm not gonna dance with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for the people that's watching live, um, just you all have to understand that uh, we're going to do the podcast here live. So there's going to be a little bit of stuff getting ready and getting set up before um, the podcast actually starts when we start doing the drawing. So just bear with us. We'll be, uh, we'll be starting in just a minute. If somebody can comment and let us know that the audio is working okay, that would be very helpful for us. Aaron Barrett Bartlett says we have time to get the love swings out. There are no love swings on premise, and we're actually going to talk about that for Mr. Kevin Thayer here in just a little bit. <laughs> Audio is good, but very low. Do we need to do we need to turn it up a little bit? Can everybody out there hear us good? Working Let us fine. Know. Working fine. Audio is good. Audio is good. You can say that YouTube's not working right now. Yeah. Um, YouTube Live. YouTube, for some reason, is giving us an error right now. So I think we're going to end up just running it here on Facebook. And then I'll put the, um, the live feed up uh, on YouTube as a uh, recorded. All right. We got a bunch of people saying that it looks good. So why don't we get started with the podcast and uh, we'll go from there. All right. I'm handing them out in case I do for you. Thank you. All right, here we go. How about if I just start at the beginning? <laughs> you can you can be honest. <laughs> you know what? They had the sweat equity to tune into that memory that they're making with their friends and family. And that's what's important. And that's what the I am real world is about. Well, that's a great question. You know, one of the best things about a spring week plot is to get a second chance if it fails. Chasing Giants with Don Higgins. Brought to you by buyafarm.com. Your source for farm, recreational properties, rural homes, and more. By tapping into Don's years of experience, dedication, and commitment, Chasing Giants focuses on the techniques, strategies, and dedication needed to harvest one of God's most amazing creations, world-class whitetails. Now, here is Don and co-host Terry Peer. Well, how's everybody doing today? It is July 4th, Don Higgins. You're sitting here in your magna hat. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Um, for those who don't know, Don records every episode in this hat. We just don't usually see him. Actually, it's only the second time I ever wore it, but uh, it was a special occasion, so I brought it out just for this. 
All right. Happy 4th of July. We're actually running on Facebook Live right now also, um, and then this is going to be updated. This is a little bit different of an episode we're doing today, uh, focusing on the, the drawing for the Lester's Feet Foundation. Yeah, and I want to start out by uh, clearing a couple things up, Terry. Um, you know, I get a lot or gotten a lot of uh, feedback about Lester's Feet and this foundation, and and everybody is looking at this as like it's a joint venture that you and I have done. And, and the fact of the matter is that you deserve all the credit. Um, it, it was your idea. You've done 99% of the work behind the scenes to, to get us to where we are today. All I've done is help you promote it. I did donate a hunt here on my farm, but uh, you know, this has been your deal and, and my mega hat is off to you um, for the great job you've done. I know you've raised a ton of money and it's gonna help a lot of families. So uh, I, I just wanna make sure that you get the due credit and that people don't look at me and think I had a major part. I had a real minor part and you're the guy that deserves all the credit for this. Well, I disagree with you, but that's okay. It won't be the first <laughs> or the last time yeah. in that. Um, you know, it goes back to you surround yourself with people that challenge you. And this would have never happened if you wouldn't have called me at that seven, I couldn't even believe you were up that early and it wasn't hunting season, but you called me that morning early at like 7.30 and said, we have to do more. Um, you know, we announced we were going to make that um, one uh, uh, help the Ford family out. And he said, you said we can use this platform to be bigger. And if you wouldn't have challenged me for that, I wouldn't have called you back an hour later and said, okay, let's do this. And then it snowballed from there. Uh, I don't think any of us would have an idea that it did this, but you know, behind the camera today and behind the microphones, my family is here, my wife Casey and my son Jonathan and Kara are here, your wife Robin is here, and then our friends um, Austin and Ann came up. They're actually on the board of Lester's Feet with us and, and helped, and they drove up there, I guess, trying to tie the loose ends of technological deficiencies of the two of us. <laughs> Well, anybody that tuned in early knows we need all the help we can get, so. <laughs> Actually, while we're at it, Austin, why don't you come up here for just a second and put a headset on. We're, we're just gonna embarrass him. So, I'm gonna unmute you for a second. Can we get, can we get him on camera? Just turn just a little bit, so. Here, I'm gonna put my laptop thing down here. I don't know if we can. Your face hasn't turned red yet. Oh, on the inside it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's, there's really a reason, and I know um, you and your wife who's sitting here holding a phone right now, um, neither one of you want this known, but not only when I called you and said, we have this idea, I need to put together a board of directors, you both said, we're in, how can we help? And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, Don and I didn't really have a big vision for this thing when we started. And uh, I had to make a phone call. I think you guys were on the road somewhere. Mm -hmm. And your, your business, you, you own an excavation company. Um, the first kind of corporate donation check we got was actually, I didn't even know you were going to do it. And um, so, so folks, the, the people that's on the board have not only stepped up with uh, a lot of prayer and a lot of support, but financially, you guys really stepped up and, and part of the total amount that we're gonna talk about we raised today started with you guys. So we wanna appreciate, show our appreciation for that. Well, thank you, well, what you're doing is awesome. We're just happy to be a part, help out any way we can. And now you made your uh, podcast debut. You're, you're gonna be seen by like a quarter million people and uh, you'll now be, you'll, you, you can, we, now we have a spokesperson or model for that we can put on the front of the website. Yeah, what? no, she's right there. <laughs> That's not me. I think we got to fill in, you know, Terry, if you and I aren't able to uh, do the podcast one week, I think uh, we got somebody to fill in for us now. Yeah. Well, on behalf of all of us, you guys have become good friends. Um, um, your wife, Ann, is actually uh, doing a lot of graphic design for Real World right now. She came up with a, we're, we're in the proof stage. She's a photographer and a graphic designer, so she made an awesome nutri -Crepe corn bag that we're going to be sending to the printer here very soon. Uh, as well as some magazine ads that you're going to be seeing in in the various hunting magazines, uh, Austin's wife Ann designed those as well. So we won't embarrass you. are welcome to Appreciate step here and talk deer hunting with us. But uh, next time you're pulling her up. <laughs> <laughs> but thank it, you guys. It, it might happen before this is over That'd tonight. Great. So, thank you guys. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys for doing that. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, raffle itself. 
a little bit more, but there's there's actually, um, you know, this this episode is going to be completely different, and and it's hard for us to focus on this because we're starting a new segment next week on Don's best and worst of the week, and we got a worst that it's all I can do not to just absolutely let you lay this one out there, but we have to keep it for next week. Yeah, but you know, I am going to throw something out this week. I don't know if anybody has seen uh, the song that I posted on my social media today, uh, posted on Instagram and uh, my Facebook page is a very, uh, I consider it timely patriotic song. And my wife will tell you, I said, it's my new theme song. And uh, there was, there was one person that saw that and sent a private message that, uh, He's seen all he can handle, and he's unfriended me and, and no longer listening to the podcast. But uh, if you haven't heard that song yet, I just encourage everybody to go to my social media and, and listen to that patriotic song. And I think it's very fitting for this 4th of July that uh, I posted that song. And you know, We're, we're not going to make everybody happy, but uh, we're always going to try to do what's right. We're going to try to use our platform to help others. Uh, you know, I've said many times the best way to be blessed is to be a blessing to someone else. And, and that blessing will come back uh, to you in some way. And, uh, you know, we've been blessed with this platform, Terry, this podcast has just exploded, um, way more, way bigger than we ever thought it would be when we started. And, and the Lester's feet thing has actually exploded too. I know that you and I kind of had a figure in in our minds that we would like to reach with this fundraiser and we have more than doubled that we've blown it clear out of the water and i'll let you talk about that later but uh we're just trying to use our podcast to uh you know help people become better deer hunters but also uh, especially young men help them to become uh you know better leaders of their family better fathers and husbands and we're not perfect by any means you're not going to have to listen to this podcast very long and, and you're going to see that, that we're not perfect but, uh, you know, we're just trying to use this platform we've been given to help others. Yeah, we're not in the business to try to make people happy, but we are in the business to try to witness. And, um, you know, you've said in your seminars a long time that you, that you believe God put you here to, to witness to lost deer hunters. And if that if that's one, if, if this podcast reaches one person, it's worth it. Um, time after time, we keep talking about whether it's the podcast or the, um, the Lester's Feet Foundation, God just puts opens doors or solves an issue or makes a connection. Um, this, this weekend before coming up here, my wife and my kids, we stayed in downtown Indy just to get away for a weekend. This morning, um, went down the, they were getting ready in the hotel. I went downstairs to grab a cup of coffee and they were actually running a 5k by our hotel this morning. So I went out on the patio and was just watching the runners run by and this guy was standing there by himself and struck up a, he had a camo hat on so I just struck up a conversation with him he hadn't heard of the podcast he was actually staying in that hotel they're from southern Indiana his son was there getting bone marrow transplant in downtown Indianapolis and he was staying and just that that was just an opportunity that God I'm convinced made a connection mm -hmm. that uh you know this family could be one of the families that were helping and got to talk to him a little bit about the foundation and learn about his story and we'll be we'll be communicating with them in the near future there's um i know everybody is is wanting to for us to get straight to the drawings but there's there's a lot of people that is um, going to come into play as we navigate this thing and i'm actually going to put him on the spot he knows i actually texted him and said don and i need to talk to you so I'm, I'm getting ready to call him. He knows we're calling, but he doesn't know we're on the podcast. So when we're going to tell him he's being recorded, but um, but we're going to call our friend Brian Kraft here. Except I'm not connected to Bluetooth. See, Ann, you should have been in charge of this too. <laughs> Technical on. difficulties. Bluetooth connected to the podcast board. Now let's go here. Yeah, that works. Hello? Hey, how are you? Doing good, Don. How are you doing? Good. Hey, it's Don and Terry both, Brian. Hey, guys. Good to hear from you. Yeah, believe it or not, you're live on uh, Chasing Giants podcast. And uh, 
our, our Facebook live feed. Um, I didn't I didn't disclose that full thing when I said, can you take a call from us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, nothing like being put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I, I, we're, we're just kicking off this show, but um, I wanted to get you on because of just the, uh, I wanted to ask you to, for the sake of our listeners, to basically just walk us through what happened when you listened to that last podcast and then what your company, uh, you own the Midwest Land Group, and what you guys have put together that's been in the works to help out these uh, these families with sick kids. Do you mind just taking a second here real quick? No, man, I'd be glad to. I, I listen to a lot of Don's podcast on driving down the road. In our business, you know, I get a lot of windshield time. And I was driving down the road and he uh, was talking about an interview he did with Matt McPherson a while back. And he gave a scripture out that said, uh, to much, to whom much is given, much will be required. I believe that's uh, Luke 12, 48. And I, I literally knew exactly what I was supposed to do. So I pulled over and uh, typed out a real quick text message to all of the agents at our company. And basically just said, hey, you know, guys, I've got a quick request of you. Um, if you feel like you've been blessed and want to be a blessing to others, I've got an opportunity for us. And I just uh, told them a little bit about the foundation. And I just said that, you know, with us being over 100 people strong, that together we could just do more as a group than we could ever do individually. And uh, my agents at the company and the people in my office really stepped up. And um, as of today, They've made a donation to Lester State in the amount of a little over $30,000. That's unreal. Wow. Thank you. That is absolutely unreal. Um, you know, and, and besides that, you and your wife uh, were also one of the first contributors. Um, you know, we sat up here in Don's shed one night for probably about an hour after everybody left talking about kind of the vision we had with this thing. And you told me at that point you were all in. So... You know, you made a financial contribution from you and your wife, uh, the two Yeti coolers that are in this raffle and the all of the Reconyx cameras were also donated by you that somebody that's going to draw this name is going to come. So on behalf of Don, myself, the board of directors from Lester's Feed, our families and the families we're getting ready to help, um, we just want to sincerely say thank you to you and the Midwest Land Group for, for believing in us and wanting to help these kids. It says a lot. Yeah, man, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity, and I appreciate y'all letting me be a part of it. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, guys. All right. So um, we're, we're, we're going to make one more phone call, and um, you know, I hope everybody's bearing with us, but this is, this is probably going to be my favorite call of the entire uh, podcast, and this thing really started with the Ward family. And, um, you know, those two little sick girls from down in Western Kentucky. And we had her on the, on an episode. Actually, you, you were unable to be there. We had to pre-record that. Right. And, uh, and our, one of our other board members, uh, uh, Dan, um, he was on there from his financial organization and uh, was able to help them out. But I thought, it was, I thought it was fitting that this organization that started with the inspiration of helping those two little girls and has gone to this that we kind of get an update about what those two girls are at. So uh, let's uh, let's get Karen Karen Ward on the phone. Hello. Hey, Miss Karen. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm hoping we hear a bunch of background noise with a bunch of kids going crazy. You're gonna hear it. Well, actually, I'm the ranger. To my brother-in-law's farm. He's working on his food plots and all that stuff. So, all right. Well, you're, you're live on the podcast. We just started a couple minutes ago, and uh, we've talked several times uh, over the last few months about uh, how these two little girls of yours have been kind of the inspiration to kick this thing off. And I thought it was only fitting that if you could just, in a couple minutes, uh, give the listeners that. I think it inspired, your all story inspired a bunch of givers outside of the podcast, all these people that's been bidding on this. Um, we want to know how those little girls of yours are doing. We're doing good. We are on an off week right now. Um, Finley, of course, is 
trekking along and um, starting to sleep a little bit better. Um, so that's good. And Abby's still in active treatment. On Wednesday of this week, we will start um, the next phase, which is the hardest phase um, for Adley. And she will be getting quite a bit of chemo and um, be on a lot of oral meds. Um, this week, we were supposed to get Tinley's court taken out, but she has had a bit of a cold. So we've had to postpone that. And um, so we're, we're good. We're enjoying this week of no medicine and a little bit of a break and trying to do some things as a family. Well, I remember the first time that I got to meet those girls, they were in the back of the van and they were in a little bit of a cranky mood. And it was the first time that I had actually got to meet it. And it's 4th of July, so this is funny. I, it was peak COVID, so we all have masks on, trying to you know stay a little bit away from the girls, not trying to get them sick or anything. And I stuck my head kind of in the, and Karen said, this is Terry. And all of a sudden, one of the little girls says, back up, Terry. <laughs> I had no idea what she was talking about. I thought she was saying get away because of COVID, but it was actually the firework video of the guy in the wheelchair that lit off the fireworks. And he could, his name was Terry. And his family's yelling at him, back up, Terry, oh. back up, Terry. Yeah. So they knew that. That's, that's my, my best memory that I've ever seen or had of these two girls. You'll appreciate the fact that there are fireworks. So we went to watch fireworks last night, and they actually had a shirt on that was a red, white, and blue that said, Back it up, Terry. <laughs> Well, um, I appreciate you taking just a quick minute, but the real reason that I wanted you on here is, you know, obviously there's a lot of people praying for those two girls of yours, and I know it has to be a struggle sometimes as being known as the family that has the two sick kids, and, and that has to be a struggle as a parent, but I hope that in the very near future, your two girls are going to be known as the ones who inspired and started Lester's Feet Foundation. And uh, I think that's going to be a special, special gift. That's the legacy of, you know, what those two girls are going to bring to a lot of people. And Don doesn't even know. I got, I got a couple board members. All of our families are sitting around here tonight. Don doesn't even know this, but uh, with the combination of corporate donations um, and over 5,300 ticket sales for this raffle, we've raised over $140,000. Through this, wow. through this experience. <laughs> Fantastic. And it all started with those two little girls. It's going to help a whole lot of families. And coming from a family that walks that road, um, it's a true blessing that people like you guys and the community that you guys serve with the podcast and everything like that has come together for families like ours. And we've been on the receiving end to know, you know, the difference that it truly makes. So I've always said our girl suffering would never be in vain. And I think this is one of those prime examples of uh, what their story is doing. And um, I'm happy to know that they're part of the beginning of Lester Street. And we're excited to see what it goes. Yep, and then Don and I, uh, we haven't really said this yet, but after those two girls, uh, or, or to where uh, your your husband Justin can get away, we're gonna have him up to actually hunt up in Illinois with us. Um, might not be this year, but at least next year when when you get those two girls through everything, he's gonna be sitting in a tree stand with me and Don up in Illinois. How about that? He's sitting right here. He said you you are kidding me. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, you get you get these. You you gotta take care of priorities right now with those two little girls. And then uh, when that's done, you're you're going to be uh, traveling up here and hunting up here in Illinois with me and Don. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you all. You're welcome. Oh, we look forward to having you. I appreciate that a lot. I've never seen a groom that big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know, but you, you did it. Last, last year was the first year I've ever met deer hunting, so I'm, I'm excited to get back in the stand. Yeah, we know you enjoy it, and we're gonna have a ball with it. But uh, you take you take care of those uh, those girls right now, and uh, we'll we'll talk more about the hunt and stuff later. That's that's a small priority, but we uh, we true we truly appreciate you guys, your faith, your love of the Lord, and uh, we just want those two little girls to get better. Okay. Keep praying for us. We appreciate all the prayers we can get. All right, we will do that for sure. Peanut butter and jellies at substation on me next week while you're up in town. Okay. Hi. We will gladly meet you there.
<laughs> all right. You all take care. We're excited to hear the winners. You guys have a good night. Thank See you. Ya. God bless. Well, I mean, that's just awesome. Of course, you don't. You know, I don't. I don't really care if I shoot another deer. If it when you see what it means to people i mean mm -hmm. we're, we're sitting here half the time worried about where we're going to find another big target buck and there's people that we just talked to on the phone that don't know you know how to make it through the next six months with their kids sick it just puts stuff into perspective really fast if you want to be blessed be a blessing all right so we're going to explain the process here on video a little bit and um if the and you want, Ann wants to get the phone. We're going to, up in here, this is one of the Yeti coolers that um, Midwest Lane Group, over 5,300 tickets have been printed out and put in here from online and uh, in-person tickets. So we're gonna be drawing names out of that. I'm gonna read out a lot number and then pass it off. And uh, don't worry about contacting me if you win something. Please, I don't need all of these phone calls coming in. But what we're going to do, this was actually your idea, Don, mm -hmm. is there's a lot of people that just purchased one ticket. And we want the people that purchased just one ticket to have still have a chance to win the hunt. Right. So what we're going to do is Don's not even going to look at this. He's going to pick two names out of the cooler, and we're going to put it in this coffee cup right here. Those two names are the people who won the hunt, okay? And no names are in it. It's not rigged. Yeah, all the people can zoom in. But anyway, um, we're going to put two names in here. And then and we're going to draw the rest of the names to the prizes. And then at the end, we're going to call the people that's on to this. The first one we draw out, I think the way we decided this is the first one we pull out, we're going to call. And they get the choice between the two hunts. Right. Then the second person gets the other hunt. Right. Does that make, yeah. that make sense? That's how we're going to do it. All right. So I think that... I, Everybody, did I explain how we're doing it? So after we draw a name, I'm going to read the lot number. Then we'll pass it off. We'll record the information of who wins what, wins what, and then I'll get with you this week. All right? So we're going to draw two names, put it in the cup, and they're going to be the ones that are going to win the two hunts. All right, so there's our two winners of the hunts right here. So, all right, we're going to start with, the, do we need to go over anything else? Um, I don't think so. Are we good? Yep. All right. So one of my kids is going to come get this from you. You can just hand it to them. That neither one of them want to be on camera. So lot number one was donated by Extreme Blower Products. This is a, an Extreme Custom Blower XL. This is going to be really, really handy for fall seed plot blowing uh, in over top coat. So who won that one? That one goes to Eric Guzman from Woodstock, Illinois. Woodstock, Illinois. All right. Lot number two is the second one. They actually donated five of these. So go ahead and pull another one. An extreme custom blower. Going to be shipped to you. They're at my house right now. This one is Chris King from Spring Glen, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. It'll be interesting to see how many of uh, how many states are represented in uh, all these 5,300 tickets. Extreme custom blower XL number three. Matthew Kaufman from Arcola, Illinois. Okay. Local guy. Local guy. Yeah, that's not too far down the road. All right. Lot number four. Aaron Weaver from Apple Creek, Ohio. Apple Creek, Ohio. And then the last, number five, Extreme Custom Blower Products. Christopher Simmons from Pittsburgh, New York. All right. All right. We want to thank those guys at Extreme Blower Products. Um, they've... Uh, We've actually used the product, and they, I think we mentioned it on a podcast yeah. one time, and they said, our ticket, our website lead, or sales went way up after we didn't even, Yep. yeah, just good products. We appreciate it. All right, lot number six is a certificate for one free set of bow strings from Custom Archery Strings. Dominant Strands is where you can find them on social media. Who won lot number six, Don? Brandon Beachy from Guthrie, Kentucky. My old buddy Brandon. I know he's listening. Yeah. All right, and then a second gift certificate valued. These things are valued at $150, Don. Second set of uh, bow strings or cables from Dominant Strands. This one goes to Marty Yoder from Apple Creek, Ohio. All right. Marty, yep. another friend. Yep, we know Marty. 
All right, lot number eight, uh, our friends down at Full Range Hanging Systems. Uh, they make the brackets where you can rotate your taxidermy mounts. You're going to, we were just talking about this, you're going to have your whole new trophy room in your new house with these things on it. So the first one is a single system, lot number eight. Well, this is going to be real interesting because we said people can win more than once. He's already done it? He's already won once. Chris King from Spring Glen, Pennsylvania. All right. Yeah, we said you could win more than once if you drew your name. So, okay, and then lot number 10 is the double system. This is where you can hang two deer heads on one bracket. Calvin Hurtis from Noble, Illinois. Calvin was at our master class. Yeah, I remember spring. Calvin. All right, and lot number 10 is a corner display for those hard to fill corners when you, uh, when you gotta hang a deer head somewhere that won't fit. This goes to Rich DeGonza from Schenectady, New York. I hope I said that right. Schenectady, isn't it? Isn't it Schenectady? I, I think it's Schenectady. Well, whatever it is, he won. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I know that name, so thank you for uh, buying tickets. All right. Lot number 11, 12, and 13 are each $75 gift certificates from Real World Wildlife Products. I'm not sure who that is. Would that be um, Wes Delks? Uh, probably Wes, yeah. I'm not going to say anything in this one because he actually bought quite a few tickets himself. Maybe he'll win a gift certificate to his own company. He might have, but he didn't win the first okay. one. Okay, so who's lot number 11? Benny Yoder from Apple Creek, Ohio. We drew his brother Marty just a little bit ago. Yeah. But, oh, that family ordered a bunch. I remember seeing those come in. Lot number 12, $75 gift trip to Real World. John Mitchell from Citronelle, Alabama. Alabama. Going to have some Real World down in the south. All right. And lot number 13, the last gift certificate here to Real World. Brendan Wingard. From Millersburg, Ohio. Millersburg, Ohio. We've been to Millersburg. I love that area yep. up there. All right. Lot number 14 and 15 were supplied by our friends and podcast sponsors, Quiet Cat. Lot number 14 is a soft-sided cooler, 50 liters. So it's a big one. Um, real handy for keeping in the back of your truck or wherever. This thing's valued at $219. It'll drop ship directly from Quiet Cat. So who won number 14? Another friend of ours, Aaron Bartlett. Yep. From Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Yep. All right. And then the second Quiet Cat package that was donated, valued at $125, is a Quiet Cat dry pack. Put all your belongings in it, roll that thing up, and it won't get wet no matter what's going on. This one goes to Josh Neuring of Batesville, Indiana. All right. All right. Lot number 16 was donated by our podcast sponsors, Lone Wolf Tree Stands. It is valued at $279, a Lone Wolf Alpha. There's quite a few of these in the shed right now that we still haven't hung up this year, but that's the tree stand that we use. So our friends at Lone Wolf were gracious enough to, to donate that. That will also direct ship directly to your house from Lone Wolf. Uh, the winner is Courtney... Liebfried from Potosi, Wisconsin. Okay. Courtney's going to be hunting out of a very comfortable, safe lone wolf tree stand this year. Lot number 17, um, our friends down at Wise Eye in Louisiana donated one of their cell cameras, don't, are valued at $299. This is a camera that I've been talking a little bit about in the hunt control software. So we want to thank the Monk family. Um, for donating this, lot number 17, a wise eye cell camera. It goes to Joe Finney from La Crosse, Indiana. All right, Joe Finney from La Crosse, Indiana. You will get a wise eye camera shipped to you directly from our friends at Wise Eye. Our good friend and, and marketing partner, uh, John Mulligan, who's got his hand in about everything. He, uh, he actually owns a turkey call company and makes turkey calls out of repurposed bourbon barrels, which is kind of cool. He donated a custom bourbon barrel turkey call from Bourbon Barrel Calls valued at $99.99, lot number 18. Goes to Jay Crable from Cashton, Wisconsin. Awesome. So, um, so John Mulligan, Arrow Wild, Johnny Utah Hunts, uh, if you follow him on social media, he'll be shipping you your turkey call directly to you. 
Lot number 19 is from Exodus Trail Cameras. Our friend Chad Sylvester and Jake Hoffer, they probably do more for consumer education for trail cameras and how to run them than anybody in the industry. Great guys, great product. Um, they donated a render cell camera valued at $335. Lot number 19 goes to Timothy Pryor from Alhambra, Illinois. Okay. You're gonna like that render cell camera. I just hung one of them today. All right, lot number 20 is donated from a very good friend of ours. Uh, Gigrich Tree Farm donated a whitetail tree package, which has 10 grafted persimmon trees ready for fall planting. So he, these are going to come to you later when you, you obviously don't want to plant trees in the middle of the heat of the summer. So Jay's going to get this together and get it to you ready for fall planting. Uh, this, this package is valued at $300. So lot number 20. This goes to Ryan Glasscock from Redbud, Illinois. And I know Ryan, he'll put these trees to use. I actually consulted on his property. So uh, was persimmon trees part of the plan? It is now. It is now. Yeah. We'll, we'll get we'll get them on it. All right, lot number 21 was donated to us by their friends at Genesis Wildlife Group, Mr. Ray Reeves. He donated a full set of Outfitter Series Vengeance Camo. That's the camo pattern that you wore um, in the Mel Hunt that uh, probably everybody listening to this watched. So lot number 21 valued at $579. I know this young man's gonna like it because I consulted on his property this year too. Matt Bruski from Fairball, Minnesota. Warm. He needs some warm clothes up in yeah. Minnesota. All right. All right, our next two prizes were donated by Volker Custom Calls. Uh, this guy is, I, I don't, if I had one of these things, I don't think I'd actually use it because they're more pieces of art than they are actual turkey and uh, deer calls. But lot number 22 is a custom grunt call made from redwood, redwood and African blackwood valued at $125. This one goes to Tim Kodish. From Shell Lake, Wisconsin. Cool. I have these things at my house. I did take a sneak peek at them. They're yep. pretty neat looking. So um, uh, lot number 23 is his turkey call. And this actually has underneath of the acrylic clear, it actually has um, uh, rattlesnake skin as the texture underneath of it. So I don't know how he got the rattlesnake. Don't want to know. That's I don't do snakes. But yeah. But lot number 23 valued at $120. Man, I keep pulling out names I know. I did a... You know everybody in the bucket. Probably curious. <laughs> I, I did a consulting visit for this gentleman too, Kenneth Headings from Deer Grove, Illinois, just at his place this past winter. All right, good deal. So thanks to Volker Custom Calls for donating those. He was, he was actually one of the first phone calls that I got when we announced on the podcast that we were doing this and he wanted to help. And you know what else? He just bought a new Chevy truck from Chris Yates. Did he really? So we know he listens to the podcast. Yeah, there you go. All right. So we got a very generous donation from our buddy Dennis Hartzell at Cranford Manufacturing Company. And you've known him for... Yeah, a long time. Forever. Um, yep. The, the, the best steps in the world, right? They got the best screws. If you got one screw in steps, you go to Cranford Easy Climb. So uh, these, these uh, lot number 24 through 48 is his camera mount, which basically gets your cell camera out away from the tree and you can turn it at any direction. Mm -hmm. So for the guys that are putting their cameras up high, you know, uh, it's a great, great tool. So he donated to us a bunch of these. So we're gonna go through these pretty quick but they're all donated by Dennis Hartzell at Cranford Manufacturing Company. We appreciate that. So lot number 24. All right, I'm scratching my head a little bit on this one because we've drawn this name before, but at a different town. This is Marty Yoder, but this Marty Yoder is from Fresno, Ohio. The previous one was from Apple Creek, Ohio. So this is Marty Yoder in Fresno, Ohio. That's why we uh, put the city and state on there because yeah. we had quite a few guys with the same name in the drawing. So... We made sure to put that on the ticket. So, hey. Lot number 25. Jacob Bordeaux from Sheldon Springs, Vermont. Jacob uh, is a real world dealer. Yeah. Lot number 26. 
Kyle Hazel from Cookville, Tennessee. Cookville, Tennessee. I've been there for something. I'm not sure what. Lot number 27. Travis Peters from Rasaka, Georgia. Rasaka. I hope I said that town right. Rasaka. All right. Lot number 28. Donated by Dennis Hartzell at Cranford Manufacturing Company. John Johnson from New Hope, PA. I did a consulting visit for him, and he came to the master class. I remember meeting him. He's a good dude. Yep. Lot number 29. Uh, Jeremy Einick from Einick, E I N C K from Muhammad, Illinois. Okay, you know more guys than a politician. Well, <laughs> I, I, should, that, I should call you the people wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it could be worse. Can I call you the people wizard? If you call me anything you want. <laughs> Lot number 30, Nathaniel Yoder from. Cynthiana, Kentucky. That's my hometown. That's where I grew up, Cynthiana, Kentucky. So if everybody, anybody's listening from Cynthiana, Kentucky, Harrison County High School, class of 1995. They don't claim you, Terry. No, they don't. Um, Lot number 31. Willis Byler from Munfordville, Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky's cleaning house here on the... I better draw from easy, the other easy, easy climb trail camera mounts. 32. Kirk Carpenter from Linwood, Nebraska. Okay, lot number 33. My son's eating a cupcake, shuttling tickets back and forth. Well, That's quite amusing. How, how many of these, uh, we, we still got plenty because I drew out two that were stuck together. Okay. Ruben Bontrager from Monticello, Kentucky gets right. one. And then 34. Jacob Bordeaux gets another one from Sheldon Springs, Vermont. There you go. So yeah, if people bought multiple tickets, they their name could be drawn multiple times. That was part of the deal, so. Aiden Miller from Burton, Ohio. No Aiden and his brother Ray very well. Consulted on two different properties for them and they've been to the master the class. Lot <laughs> <laughs> number 36. You're a wizard at anything. Well, I don't know that. about that. Um, don't know this guy. Get him a special um, hat. Brian Sammons from Kitts Hill, Ohio. All right, lot number 37. Joseph Thurlow from Cockeysville, Maryland. All right, 38. Brent Showmaker from New Baden, Illinois. Right, lot number 39. Wayne King from Quarryville, Pennsylvania. Another PA guy. Lot number 40. Are, are we staying on numbers right? I haven't skipped one, have I? All right, no. this is lot number 40. Now, what is the odds of this? I drew the same guy's name twice in a row. Wayne King from Quarryville, Pennsylvania. Well, he bought a bunch of tickets, so it's not... Okay. I, rem I remember seeing that name come in. He was a big, big donor of we this. We appreciate his support for sure. Yes, sir. All right, lot number 41. Sam Lehman from LaGrange, Indiana. All right, lot number 42. I just saw Devin Hurley popped in here. Devin's a buddy of mine from Kentucky. He's watching live. Lot number 42. Nathan Kelsey from Kirksville, Missouri. Kirksville, Missouri. I think I've been there for something, too. Lot number 43. Courtney Leapfried from Potosi, Wisconsin. That's the second time that name's been called. I didn't think we would have any duplicates with all the tickets in here. But. All right. Lot number 44. Brendan Wingard. From Millersburg, Ohio. All right. Before we go to lot number 45, we've had a lot of people sign on so far. What we did before we started is you do two names before any names were taken out. And inside this little coffee cup right here is the two names of the people who won the hunts. All right. We drew those out. We're going to we're gonna disclose those here in just a little bit. We're going through uh, lot number 45 now. Kenneth Hemmings again from Deer Grove, Illinois. We need to stir them things up. 
No, I'm sticking my 50, hand down into the bottom. 5,300 tickets in that cooler, so. All right, lot number 46. Matt Neighbors from Frisco, Texas. Texas, that's the first one we've had from Texas so yep. far. All right, we got two more Easy Climb trail camera mounts, lot number 47. Jim Schleski Jr. from Robesonia, Pennsylvania. All right. We've had quite a few from Pennsylvania. We think we got a lot of listeners in Pennsylvania. All right, the last Easy Climb trail camera mount from Cranford Manufacturing Company, lot number 48. Kelly Knight from Rockingham, Virginia. All right, good deal. All right, the next three lots, lot 49, 50, and 51, is from my friends at Wildlife Analytical Laboratories. This is DeerAge.com. This is where I send all of my tooth, the front incisors off. I think uh, we talked about it on the podcast. It's a, it's a really good learning opportunity as you're, uh, you know, no matter what part of the journey you're on, whether you're, you know, right. hunting mature bucks or, or just starting to learn what the true age uh, people think they can age them by a trail camera picture. It's just not it's, happening. It's not possible. So this is a platinum service from DeerAge.com. Each of these are valued at ninety dollars, eighty nine ninety nine at DeerAge.com. So lot number forty nine. William Byler from Natalie, Virginia. Okay, I have these at my house. You're going to be see receiving these here shortly. I'll be shipping them out to you. So lot number fifty. DeerAge.com Platinus Service Certificate. Monty Zaludic from Serona, Wisconsin. All right. And then finally, lot number 51. Raymond Yoder from Delhi, Iowa. I know Raymond. I did a consulting visit on his farm. Well, he's going to see how old the buck that he shoots yep. this year is. All right, lot number 52 was donated by Taz Timbers Outdoors. This is former Major League Baseball player Tony Zyke, good friend of mine. Um, he, um, if, if people remember watching Real World Social Media account, he played for the Yankees last year. He actually sent us a picture in a Real World shirt on the field of uh, Yankee Stadium. Yeah. That was pretty cool. So he's put together a package that he's going to be sending out. Um, lot number 52. Mark Stoltzfus. From Farmington, Ohio. Okay. So thanks to Taz Timbers Outdoors. Make sure you're following them on social media. T-A-Z Timbers Outdoors. They got a real good Instagram page. All right. Lot number 53 is a hard-sided Tundra 65 cooler like the one Don is uh, drawing out of. Donated by Midwest Land Group. Valued at $350. Lot number 53. It goes to Steve Mast. From Goshen, Indiana. All right. That's at my house sitting in the garage in a box. I'll be shipping that thing to you here this coming week. And lot number 54 is a second Yeti hard-sided Tundra 65 cooler. $350 cooler is going to go to Dana Dixon from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Hey, I'm not shipping that thing. His daughter's one of uh, my pitchers and softball right. players. Yeah, so... Uh, he, he gets to pack the drinks for all the future uh, tournaments now that he's got a $350 cooler. These Yeti coolers will keep him cold. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to the uh, other donations by Midwest Land Group. The next one is going to be a Reconyx Hyperfire trail camera um, valued at $399, a standard kelp trail camera from Reconyx. It goes to Alex Bundy from Burnside, Illinois. Alex, you are going to love Reconyx trail cameras. I promise you that, buddy. A second Reconyx Hyperfire trail camera, lot number 56. It goes to Roland Shoemaker II from Lexington, Illinois. All right. And Brian Kraft actually donated four of these. So this is the third Reconyx Hyperfire, lot number 57. $400 trail camera. Alan Foster from Shelbyville, <laughs> Illinois. Our I've buddy, heard uh, that name before. Yeah. He, all he's going to do is want to get turkey pictures with that yeah. thing now. All right. And lot number 58, the, the last of the standard Hyperfire Reconyx trail cameras. Lot number 58. Yeah. I had a whole handful. I thought I was pulling out one. I had about four. <laughs> they sticking together? Yeah. A little humid in here. Um... Rick Bach 
from South Lyon, Michigan. Um, he's another consulting client, and he's been to the master class, believe it or not. <laughs> well, he's he's going to be taking deer pictures on our Iconics camera awesome. here. All right, and then uh, again from donated by Brian Kraft and the rest of the folks at Mid Midwest Land Group, the next two Reconyx cameras are their Hyperfire cell cameras valued at $600 a camera. This one goes to John Lapp from Cambridge City, Indiana. Okay. Believe it or not, I consulted on John's property. <laughs> All right, that was lot number 59. This is lot number 60 for the second Reconyx Hyperfire cell camera. $600 camera here, folks. Well, this man's going to be really happy because he was just at my house two days ago, and he picked up six cameras, six well, Reconyx cameras. He's going to get a seventh. Derek Hood from Marion, Illinois. All right. All right, good deal. Thank you again um, for those of you who are on the... Uh, live feed of this earlier we got brian craft um just 30 over thirty thousand dollars yeah that was awesome that's amazing um we appreciate brian and uh, his friendship all right lot number 61 is a friend of ours at chippewa wedge lock tree stands these guys make a tree stand that even big boys like me up to 475 pounds can get up in the side of a tree and feel secure in it they got a um <laughs> what no. <laughs> Did you, you just call me fat? No, I was, I was just looking at this name oh. and kind of giggling because they're not going to believe it. <laughs> All right. Lot number 61, a Chippewa wedge lock tree stand valued at $360. Who won it? You're not going to believe this, folks, but I consulted on this guy's property and he has been to the master course. His name is Chad Sprague from Williamsport, Indiana. I know Chad. Yep. All right, so that's going to ship directly to you, Chad, from the manufacturer. You want a Chippewa wedge lock tree stand, so thanks to those guys for donating. The next two lot numbers are from our friends Dwayne and Connie Hopkins, and they have donated two lots of premium five-way fescue blend for somebody's yard, and uh, this stuff retails for... Sixty-two fifty a piece. Dwayne's going to ship this out to the winners. Who won lot number sixty-two? Donated by uh, Dwayne and Connie. I think Dwayne's watching. I think I saw something pop up a minute ago. Thanks, thanks for your help, Dwayne. So this one goes to Ruben Bontrager from Monticello, Kentucky. Mm. All right, and then uh, 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 version number two, lot number sixty-three. Same thing. Five thousand square feet of five-way premium. Fescue from Kitchen Seat Company. You guys aren't going to believe it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Guy Antonacci from Summers, Connecticut. I've been to his property in both Connecticut and Massachusetts, two properties, and he's been to the master course. Yeah, he's, he's actually a good friend. I, I think there's a theme here, Terry. If you if you have me console on your property and you come to the master course, your luck gets a whole lot better. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> well, Guy's probably laughing right now because... He owns a golf course, so I don't think, I'm not sure he needs <laughs> grass seed, but maybe he does. He may hey, need a lot of grass seed. Hey, we're sending you grass seed, buddy. So thanks for your for buying tickets, and thanks to Dwayne and Connie Hopkins for donating it. Uh, lot number 64, uh, this was actually uh, orchestrated through Nexus Outdoors, and it's a $150 gift certificate to Scentlock.com. Uh, we don't have any affiliation through them, but they heard about it through some mutual friends and wanted to help. So this is a $150 gift certificate to Scentlock. I have this and we'll email it to the winner. This goes to Robert Bailey from Ada, Oklahoma. All right. So now we're at lot number 65, Don. This is when it gets a little serious here. So we have... We have some partners that have really stood behind us even before the podcast and before Lester's feet. But um, the uh, the folks at Matthews, we, we've talked about it before on this when it comes to outreach and, and missions and ministry. Um, you know, they're all in, but they, they asked some very specific questions. We got on a conference call with them and they wanted to know about the foundation, where the money was going. Um, they did their due diligence to make sure that what they were affiliating uh, their name with was was on point with what their beliefs are. Yeah, I've told the story on the podcast before, but uh, did an interview with Matt McPherson, who founded Matthews Archery, 
And uh, it was almost life changing because the quote he told me probably 15 years ago sticks with me to this day. And um, to whom much is given, much is required. And uh, I've just tried to follow the Matthews example. You know, uh, Matthews employees have told us that when they have employee meetings, Matt tells them the more money we make, the more humanitarian work we can do around the world. And uh, there's a guy that uh, puts his money out there, but you never hear him talking about it. Uh, it's guys like us that they got to get that word out. If uh, you knew what Matthews did with their money, you wouldn't buy any other brand of bow. So, yes, yeah, so, so Matthews, Matthews is going to step up and they're donating their brand new VXR. So the winner of this is going to choose whether they want the 27 or the 31 and a half inch axle bow, right or left hand. Um, I'm sure if a, if a young lady buys it, Matthews will work with us to fit them. But this, this bow is $1,200 that they're, that they're donating. You ready? Let's go. Who I can tell you this bow is going to stay in Wisconsin. Courtney Liebfried from Potosi, Wisconsin. That name's been drawn before. It's been drawn again. You just want a new Matthews bow. You want a brand new Matthews bow. So uh, I'll get with you next week. We'll get the details of it. Um, start getting measured for your draw length. That's a, that's a huge, huge prize. But it's not as big as this one. Um, I, was, I was a little shocked when, because the folks at 360 Hunting Blinds have been a great partner, great supporter. Their blinds are... We got a stack of them sitting in here, but they can't build enough blinds right now. Um, they've, they've built a new building. They've changed their manufacturing. Uh, even without supply changes and supply chains and shortage of lumber, uh, their demand is so high. But he went ahead and blocked out a production schedule and says, I'm donating a new 6x6 Pro uh, without a stand. Folks, this thing's almost $2,500 that he's donated a brand new 360 blind without a stand. We'll have to work on some logistics and getting it to you, but you're getting ready to pull out lot number 66, a brand new 360 blind. Who is it? It goes to Nathan Byler from Vermontville, Michigan. We know Nathan. He's been to the master class. <laughs> I've been to his property, and he's a real world dealer. All right. Congrats, Nathan. Congrats. That's 66. So that is the last. So if you total that up, that's $12,000 of prizes that we just gave away. But most of these raffles that go like this don't happen this way because all of this is, was 100% donated. So and 100% of the proceeds from these sales is going to help families of sick children. There's no administration cost coming out. Every dime we make goes to help somebody. And, and uh, people also have to realize after we started publishing this, more companies and more people stepped up and wanted to donate. It's just since we had already released the list of everything, we cut it off and said we'll save it for the next one. Hopefully we can go bigger and better this time. Right. So um, we're right at 54 minutes in, and we're down to drawing two more people's names that we get to call on the phone and say... You want to come hunting with us? So I'm kind of I'm kind of anxious to see who this is going to be. So I put two names in this cup, and I did not look at them. So I don't I don't have any idea who they are. So are you going? How how should we should have talked about this ahead of time? Are we just going to call them? Or are we going to announce the name first? Um, or should we just let's call, call them? them? Okay. So we got to see who this is. The first person gets their pick to hunt with me on my farm or Terry on his. And I can tell you, folks, which one you need to take. Um, Do we know him? This person did not come to my master class, and I did not consult on their property, but... Uh, Do you know him? I do not. So we're going to meet a new friend here. We're not disclosing the phone number. Everybody's on Facebook Live has their cell phone in their hand ready right now. <laughs> if it rings, people, you better pick it, it up. Is. Is this Jay? Yeah. Hey, Jay, this is Don Higgins with Chasing Giants Podcast. Yes, sir. You're not going to believe why I'm calling. Uh, 
I can't, no, I can't believe why you're calling. <laughs> I have a feeling, but I can't believe why you're calling. You won. You won. We just drew your name out. You are the grand prize winner. One of the two. One of the two. You were you the get, first of them. You get your first choice. To You want to hunt with either me or Terry. On my, if you hunt with me, it'll be on my farm in Illinois. If you hunt with Terry, you actually got a couple choices. You can hunt with it, him in the early season on his Kentucky farm, or he has a lease here in Illinois that you can hunt. So, um, But you got your choice, and uh, the next person will get the choice that you do not take. So... Um, What's it going to be? Um, you won't offend us either way. We're, we're, we're fine. Uh, you're going to meet us both. If you hunt with Terry, I'm coming down uh, to spend the, the weekend with well, you. Well, I got a question first while he's thinking about it. Okay. Jay, how many tickets did you end up buying? I bought uh, whatever, $400. Holy whatever smokes. Bought. Thank you for, thank you for doing that. It's, that's a lot of kids that we're going to be able to help. Do you uh do you listen to the podcast or how did you hear about it? Yeah, and actually I talked to you on the thirtieth, and I'm not, or not, yeah, I, I called you on the thirtieth and, and uh, told you about the website issue, and we had a good conversation. I'm mm -hmm. the same guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen to the podcast. I've been listening to the podcast since the uh, uh, first part of the year. Well, just so you know, Jay, you are live right now. The, <laughs> I guess we should have disclosed that first. We're not, we're not trained professionals at this, so uh, sorry for not disclosing I, that. That's okay. I have been this much. So. That was in the terms and conditions of buying the ticket. Yeah. So we're, we're, yeah. we're covered. Uh, I think I'll, I'll choose uh, hunting on a Wise choice, man. Well, yeah, we look I, forward to having you. How far away? You're in Cypress, Illinois, is that right? No, I'm, I'm in Cypress, Illinois. I'm originally from Greenville, Illinois. I, I know real well where, where you're at, Don. Not that I've uh, <laughs> been any of my Yeah, one of them stalkers, huh? One of them yeah. Stalkers. yeah. <laughs> no, Jay, oh, yeah. we appreciate your support, and I look forward to having you here at my place to hunt. So uh, I'll be in touch with you. I've got your phone number here, of course, and uh, we'll make arrangements uh, that you know something that works for your schedule and mine and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice buck on the ground for you so this is okay. this is all you got to do is pay to get here um yep we take care of everything else and uh, of course you might already have an illinois license i don't know if you've already bought it yet or not but since you're a resident yeah i'm an illinois, yeah, I'm an illinois resident but, but even yeah. if even if he shoots a buck taxidermy's even taking care of that's it that's right our friend yeah, justin yeah. nice uh, donated the, the taxidermy or the, the mount for that so so we'll get to we'll get to spend some time with you in October, okay, Jay? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Hey, man. I apologize for the fact that I'm going up, but I'm bailing hay right now. So. No, you're <laughs> good. All right. Yeah. Sounds well, good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate everything you guys do, and I appreciate what you're doing with uh, Left of Speed, and I just appreciate the truth that comes out with uh, the podcast. So, so thank you very much. I think uh, that's the thing that uh, leads us a lot of us. To, uh, to the podcast. We're just searching for truth and honesty. So. Well, we appreciate your support, Jay, and look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Have a good night. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. All right. So we met a new friend. Yep. So we got one more. We got yeah. Here. Oh, boy. I don't think you're going to get this gentleman. Not going to answer? It's an... I believe it's an Amish gentleman. Well, he might be sitting at the phone shack. You never know. On Sunday, he's probably not. Probably not. But we'll give her a try. Your call has been forwarded to an automated <laughs> voice messaging system. That was the call. Is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hey, Matthew, this is Terry Peer and Don Higgins from the Chasing Giants podcast. We were just calling you to tell you that you actually just won a hunt as one of the grand prize winners. So you have an invitation to travel to Kentucky and hunt early season with me and try to target a velvet buck or hunt my lease here in Illinois around the end of October with me. So uh, we'll be getting in touch with you soon um, and uh, uh, work out the details of it. But congratulations. You won the grand prize on Chasing Giants podcast 
luster's feet raffle. We'll get in touch with you later, buddy. Thank you. Um, for our, our viewers, the winner of that is Matthew Kaufman from Arcola, Illinois. So uh, a, a local young man, I guess he's a young man. Uh, I never met Matthew, I don't believe, um, but not far from my house. I just got a text from a guy and says the one prize, this is the guy who won the grass seat that has the golf course. Uh, he said the one prize I didn't need to win. Well, you won it, buddy, and it better it better be right in the front as you pull in the gate because, you know, when Don pulled in there, he, he hadn't been to some place that fancy, and he pulls in and somehow got his ton, ton extended cab long bed truck on the cart path of the golf course and almost ran over into a sand trap. Well, I've never seen the golf cart <laughs> paths that have asphalt on them. I thought I was pulling off the road onto, a, onto another road. Yep. Well, did I know I'm driving through a golf course with all these people looking at me like I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, ever, if you ever see a ton uh, diesel truck driving down the cart path, it's a good good likelihood that Don's done a consulting visit yep. for someone who Some works there and he got lost on it. So, all right. Well, um, I, I want to take just a second, and um, the, they don't want to really be known, but we have to thank um, another group, and that is the folks at SC Online Sales. So Roland and the team of people there, um, they, they're not accustomed, or they're accustomed to doing charity auctions and everything. They're trying to get a little bit more in the outdoor industry, but uh, they usually get commissions off of these sales. But when they heard about what we were about, they forfeited their commission. And all of the people, I wanna tell you, all the people at the last minute that were trying to get through and buy tickets, and they made some special arrangements for our Amish friends to be able to mail checks in. Um, my sincere thank you to the folks at SC Online Sales, but most importantly, Allison Reynolds, who was the one that originally reached out to us. Um, the uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to get to talk to her and consider her a friend, and uh, just super thankful that God opened that door, because if it wasn't for them, I don't think we would have been able to pull this thing off. Mm -hmm. um, to be to be quite frank so without the folks at SC online sales uh, Roland and his team but especially Allison Reynolds um, we, we truly truly appreciate your friendship and um, you stepping up and uh, and really helping us out with that so hundred and forty thousand dollars plus yeah I remember when we started we was dreaming that we might hit fifty thousand uh, I'll be honest with you I thought we'd be lucky if we would get to about 20 when we started and then it started creeping up and we thought oh we're gonna get to 50 and then once it got to like 75 I just quit talking to you about it mm -hmm. I was like this is gonna be a, a neat surprise to somewhere so um, we do want to um, to mention let me pull up the um, uh, Facebook link. There is one more opportunity to win some prizes that were in. Help me out, Ann. Is this outdoor extravaganza? Great outdoor extravaganza. Uh, if you follow, if you search that, it's going to be in New Albany, Ohio. A lot of the companies that donated to this actually also donated to that event. And uh, this is a event put on uh, by Eric Perry and Rich Hickson, uh, friends of ours, and it's going to be at the Fire Hall in New Albany, Ohio, July 17th. I think Austin's going to be there. Everybody can come meet Austin. He, he face turned red. He's doing public appearances and signing autographs. Yeah. He's over here shaking his head at me. Uh, but that's on July 17th. You do not need to be present to uh, purchase a ticket. Go to their Facebook page, Outdoor Ex Great Outdoor Extravaganza, New Albany, Ohio. Half of the proceeds from this event, they're donating back to Luster's Feet. So there's going to be another big donation that comes in that we're going to be able to help families on. So please go check that out and uh, and get with those guys if you have any other questions. You know, Terry, if we uh, if this is, becomes an annual deal, which I see it, it probably will. It, it's we're going to hit a million dollars in in short order. I mean, I think it's going to snowball from here. If God keeps opening those doors, I'm not putting any cap on it. I think that every every little challenge or hiccup, whether it was gaming laws, whether it was how to route money or, you know, uh, be accountable to the people that were donating and churches stepping up and people stepping up. Uh, good, a good friend of ours and uh, listener of the podcast reached out to us. He's a tax attorney. 
Right. And we're having some trouble right now navigating the IRS with nonprofit status. When he gets back, he's out of the country right now. When he gets back, he's gonna he's offered to help us try to navigate and fast track that through in the next couple of weeks. So every time there's been a challenge or something, God's God's made a connection or opened a door. And uh, the thing that we really need to focus on right now is we do not want this money sitting in a bank account. Um, we want we we're getting we're starting to get a lot of leads for families that have sick kids and we're gonna that's we we got through this now right and there was a lot of work that went into this now our goal with the board is reviewing the family situations that that become available to us and figuring out how to help these families this money does no good sitting in a bank account for long periods of time so I have no doubt that God's gonna make those connections the same way that He did making all this work up to this point. I think it's very important that we let the people that supported this know that we're not just writing a check and sending it to this, these families, that you're actually taking a bill uh, and paying it for those families. If they've got travel expenses or whatever, you may call ahead and make motel reservations for, so that they have a place to stay while their child's in a nearby hospital. It's not just writing a check and dropping it in the mail to people. It's actually going to pay bills. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the families that we're that we're following and working with in Kansas City right now, um, you know, one of the blessings that they said this was is is going into the situation where their son's having treatment and it's two hours away from home, and they can't work. They know that our backing is kind of a safety net is allowing them to make a decision that's best for the treatment of their child, not having to worry, oh, well, if we do this, we're going to lose our house. Right. Or if we do this, we can't, you know, we have to live in a van or whatever. So um, the beauty of our small organization is that we don't have a lot of red tape. Our board reviews it, and if we see a need that needs to be filled, it doesn't matter if we're buying a, you know, a meal plan at the hospital or, or a hotel bill or even a home mortgage or a car payment. Um, while those we want those families to worry about that kid, not how the bills are getting paid. Yeah, and the other thing that I want to stress is the glory of, of all this is not ours, but it's it's God's. He's opened the doors for us to do this. He's given us this platform, and uh, you and I are nothing special. We're just simple country boys. I like to say all the time, but we've tried to to use this um, this platform to help others. So. So we appreciate everybody that's been on Facebook Live sticking out with us. Um, congratulations to the winners. We'll be getting those in touch with you. Um, we, Man, it's hard not to just let you go off on your Don's best and worst this week, but we're going to save that for next week. There's also another segment that I'm really excited about that we're going to spend time on next week that I think is going to be really helpful for hunters is analyzing velvet pictures. So we see a lot of pictures being posted right now. Oh, look how big he's going to be. It's still early. That doesn't always that doesn't always make the case, does it? Right. Yeah, I think that'll be a good discussion. And I really, uh, I, I've seen some posts on social media here in the last couple of weeks. You know, people posting uh, pictures of bucks and velvet, and then some of the comments that, that come in after him. It just gives me the uh, the idea that a lot of, of deer hunters don't totally understand the the velvet or the antler growing process and we're going to try to clear that up just a little bit so i'm i'm going to go ahead and ask three questions so you can prepare for next week and it sparks some interest for the people listening because they have one whole week to submit questions that 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 we could use for the podcast maybe to this topic is how do you know at any given time how much bigger an, a, a brack's going to be so today's july 4th i got a picture of a a buck that I think has a good potential. How how big do I think he's going to be based on that time point? What do things that I work out? Actually, I'm only going to ask two. And the second one is for younger deer. What are some things? Because you know we're talking about putting the yearly history of a buck from year to year to year. Mm -hmm. What are things or characteristics that you're looking for? Even if you know a buck's not going to be a shooter this year, things that I want to watch for and maybe start logging to build that history of that buck for the future. So prepare on that. If people's got any other questions than that, then obviously we'll take them. For sure. Look right. forward to it. All right. I don't have anything else. You got anything else? I really I, want you to go off on that, but we're not going to do it. 
And I think we better we, just... We both, we both got pretty fired up this week. <laughs> Actually, we didn't get him as mad as Wes. Yeah, Wes was really fired up. Wes was really mad. All right. Well, with that, why don't you take us out with our sponsors? Thanks for everybody for the contribution to Lester's Feet. Thanks to the board for Lester's Feet, Austin, Annie, and uh, my daughter, oldest daughter, Kaylin, who's not here tonight, and then Dan from Indiana. We appreciate everybody's help and uh, look forward to helping these families. So we want to thank our, our sponsors, buyafarm.com, 360 Hunting Blinds, Victory Chevrolet, wildlifefarming.com, Quiet Cat, Matthews Archery, Real World Wildlife Products, Vortex Optics, Lone Wolf Tree Stands, and Vengeance Camo. Have a happy 4th, everyone. Thanks to all the Facebook people.